Welcome to Mirrorfly the Unified Communications product to send and receive real-time messaging using our chat SDK. In this video, we shall deep dive to understand how to send and receive the first chat message for the Android platform. You can easily add real-time chat features to your client app in less than 20 minutes. Let us start by looking through the documents. You may also use our pre-build sample application available in GitHub. Download today to explore more about the real-time chat and call features. This is the fastest way to build your app's UI with Mirrorfly Chat SDK. Before getting started with the integration steps, you need to know the basic system requirements. You need a valid SDK license key to initiate chat. Get a valid license key from the Mirrorfly user console or dashboard. Now I am logging into the Mirrorfly user console. And on the overview page, I find links to access documents and sample apps across platforms, sandbox API credentials. And I can find the most important and my unique SDK license key. This license key is used to initiate the chat and connect to the Mirrorfly service. Let us start with integrating the SDK. In the first step, create a project in Android Studio. In the step 2 choose the right Gradle version that you're going to use in your project. You could copy the Maven and JCenter code and add it to settings.gradle file or root build.gradle file according to your Gradle version. We have published our SDK files in Maven which simplifies your integration steps with JCenter dependencies. This single Maven repo configuration file has the majority of information required to, to set up the SDK dependencies. Now moving on to step 3. So, copy and add the dependency code in the app slash build.gradle file. This included all the required remote binary dependencies. These dependencies require that you declare the appropriate remote repositories where Gradle should look for the library. Now moving on to step 4. Here we, we would copy and add the gradle.properties file into the project to avoid imported library conflicts in the project. This Android plugin automatically migrates existing third-party libraries by rewriting their binaries. Now moving on to step 5. To add user permission. To add these user permissions, Open the Android Manifest.xml and add the below permissions to integrate your chat SDK. You must declare all permission requests with an element in the manifest. If the permission is granted, the app is able to use the protected features. Well, let us move on to initialize the chat SDK. The chat SDK builder class is used to provide the necessary data to the SDK. In your application class, inside the onCreate method, use the below chat SDK builder to provide the necessary data. Now moving on to register a chat user. Here I used a simple UI with a register button to register a user. You would be calling register user method to register a user in your project. This register user method will accept FCM token, force register, user type and list metadata as an optional parameter and you can handle them to your needs in the app. Set up response message to know the status and the value for every method to return. You can refer to our documentation to understand more about these arguments and the types to use it in your app. Firebase Cloud Messaging or FCM offers a broad range of messaging options and capabilities. A registration token that is generated by the FCM SDK for the user's app instance to send messages for free. Notification messages, sometimes thought of as display messages. These are handled by the FCM SDK automatically. These push notifications are required to send and receive notifications in the app. Data messages are to be handled by the client app. 
moving on to connect the chat server. The set connection listener method enables you to request that the device connect to a server. Once registration was successful, Chat SDK will automatically attempt to connect to the chat server and Chat SDK also observe the changes in the application lifecycle. Accordingly, it will try to connect and disconnect the chat server. In the observe connection, once the chat connection listener has been set, you will be able to receive the connection status in the callback method as mentioned in the code. Similarly, you can set it up when the server disconnects and drops. In case if the connection not authenticated and not established, you can get a notification message set in the code. In the documents, we have added more information about setting individual ID and group ID. Now moving on to send a one-to-one -one message. To send a message to a receiver, you need to enter the username of the receiver. To generate a unique user ID, you must call the other user's username using method flyutils.getJID with username as a string. The username will always be a string and does not include any special characters. Copy and paste the send text message code into the app. To receive the message sent, you can extend the FlyBase activity from SDK into your AppBase activity and observe all the incoming messages and other feature listeners. The listeners would be called only when a new message is received from another user. You can set a response message to know the status of the sent message. Suppose it fails you can handle it in the else case. When you run the application these responses would help you to know the actual status of the activity with a response. Now extend the FlyBase activity from SDK into your AppBase activity and observe all the incoming messages and other feature listeners. Change the main activity class to class fly base activity. Then copy and paste the on message received code. In the on message received, the user will receive the message sent by the other user. So now it is all set for us to run the application. Let us use a simulator to test the send and receive message. For that I need to register a new user. I am registering a user using a phone number. I have used user's phone number as the unique identifier here while registering a user. In the debug log, check for registration status, it would return the message for successful registration that you have included in the code. Likewise for the server connection, we could see the connection got established successfully. So the user registration and server connection are done successfully. Now all set to send the first message to another user. The message is sent to another user and a push notification alert is also sent to notify the receiver about the new message. To ensure the integration is working perfectly, the receiver can now send a reply to the sender. So the send and received chat message in Android is completed. Thank you for your time. Hope you were able to follow the steps and this video is helpful in your chat SDK integrations. For more information, please refer to our documentations. If you have any questions or need further support, feel free to reach our customer success team from the user console.
choose Mirrorfly for real-time in-app chat features to enhance and build greater customer experience. Thank you.